Well, welcome back. This Christmas weekend may be a good time to check out a film in theaters or on the small screen. As always, we're joined live by film critic Richard Krause. Rich, it's great to speak with you, as always. Curious, though, um, this uh, latest installment with Mr. Anderson, is it worth it? I'm hearing some mixed reviews. <laughs> Yeah, the reviews have been mixed. I'm afraid mine's a little bit more on the downside uh, than the upside. It's The Matrix Revolutions. It's been 18 years since there was a Matrix movie in theaters. And I think that over that amount of time, uh, people may have forgotten just how groundbreaking uh, the movies were and how uh, that bullet time effect was something unlike anything we had ever seen before. Uh, now the new one comes along and Apart from having way too much explanation, there are characters all the way along, all the way through, that tell you exactly what's going to be happening, what has happened, uh, you know, what's happening right in that second. There's a lot of talk in here, which, uh, to me, turned the movie into a bit of a slog because it slows down the action. And then when you get to the action, there are some big action scenes that you might expect from uh, something with the word Matrix in the title, uh, but they didn't seem groundbreaking. They didn't seem, uh, frankly, as interesting as we've seen in other installments. So I could only give it two and a half out of five stars. It's playing in theaters, though, this weekend. Should have took the blue pill. Uh, uh, Rich, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about another movie that's directed by Mr. Anderson. Uh, but uh, this one is also starring the offspring of a, I guess, one of the most respected actors, uh, I guess, of the last maybe 30 years. Yeah, it's uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, uh, Connor Hoffman, uh, stars as a 15-year-old who falls in love at first sight with... Uh, a woman named Alana. She's about 24 years old, I think, when the movie starts. Uh, so there's an age gap. They go on a date, and romance doesn't really blossom between them, but they become tight friends. And the movie covers a few years in their blossoming friendship. And they go on kind of wild adventures. They start a business together, all sorts of things. Uh, and I loved this movie. I loved that it is uh, a study in what it's like to, you know, fall in love for the first time. I love the dialogue, the performances from both Hoffman and Alana Hyam, who you've probably best known as the guitar player and keyboardist in the rock band Hyam. Uh, she's fantastic in here. If she wants to give up music, she has another career. Uh, absolutely, as a film actor. Then you have Bradley Cooper. Uh, you've got Sean Penn, Tom Waits in here. Another really interesting, you know, addition to the cast. Uh, Licorice Pizza. Uh, the name is uh, borrowed from a chain of record stores in Los Angeles in the 1970s. If you're wondering where the name comes from, because they do not address it in the movie, uh, but it's fantastic stuff and it's on screens right now. This next one, I'm hearing uh, it being described as a masterpiece. I know it's starring a couple of heavywood, uh, Hollywood heavyweights. So tell us about Tragedy of Macbeth. Yeah, this is directed by Joel Cohen for the first time in 40 years, uh, directing solo without his brother, Ethan, uh, as part of the Cohen brothers. And uh, he's delivered a beautiful, stark, austere version of Macbeth. It clocks in just over 90 minutes. Uh, he's got some of the best actors working today, Francis McDormand and uh, Denzel Washington, Brendan Gleeson's in here. So you've got fantastic actors uh, who really bring this text to life. If I've had a number of people say this to me, oh, Shakespeare, I sometimes get lost in the language. I can't understand what the words mean all the time. If that's an issue with you, don't worry about it. These actors are so good that even if you don't completely understand the meaning of a phrase or a line, you'll understand the emotion that lies underneath it. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. It's called The Tragedy of Macbeth. I gave it four to five stars in theaters now, and it'll be on Apple TV Plus on January 14th. Aesthetically, it looks stunning. Um, let's talk so, about this last film, The Kingsman. What can we expect from this? Well, this is the third part of the Kingsman series. Uh, Colin Firth and Taron Edgerton started in the first couple of them. Uh, now you have an origin story that goes back to the First World War and the beginnings of this super secret spy organization. But with this movie, 
uh, clocks in at about two and a half hours, somewhere in and around there. And it's by times a slapstick comedy. It's by times a spy adventure. It's by times an action movie. And what it ends up feeling like to me is three movies all spliced and diced into one long kind of messy story. So I could only give it uh, two and a half out of five stars. It's in theaters, though, this weekend. Some good picks there, Rich. It's always great to speak with you. In the event that I don't speak with you next Friday, you have yourself a very uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year.